Yo, yo, yo. Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Let's see. Yo, what up, Instagram? So, as you all know, we're doing something. Um, I think probably my favorite thing we've done so far. Doing something we refer to as Mob Week. And I thought, what better way? Uh, what better way to jump off Mob Week than by letting you peek inside of I ain't seen any either. I don't think we live because I don't see it. Oh, I see two people are on. Check, check. Drop it in the chat if you can see. Y'all, we testing this thing out, streaming in here. I'm trying to see if y'all can if y'all can see me, if you can hear me. Drop in the chat. I see you. Drop in the chat. I hear you. If you can hear me, if you can see me. We should be live. We should be live right now. So I don't know. It's supposed to be live on YouTube, live on Instagram, live on Facebook. So we're trying something different. We wanted to give you a sneak peek inside of. All right. So we're on Facebook. We're on yeah, YouTube. Facebook. But I'm not oh. seeing Instagram. Why am I not seeing IG on this thing? I don't know. All right. Copy video URL. Go to YouTube Studio. All right, so we're testing this out. To those who are logging in, go ahead and drop in the chat. I see you. I see you. Uh, we're doing something. There's so many new things we have going on inside of our company, man. So for those that are logging on, every Monday for us is our coaching day. Uh, Tuesday is staff meetings. It's where um, all of the different companies, all our departments, we meet and kind of talk strategy. We do, we do situational trainings, which we'll speak through. And I wanted you all to introduce you to... My COO, Krisha Sarah Bowen, man, is my partner in success in both faith and business. So we do a lot of amazing things. We get a chance to lead God's people to grow in their relationship with God, but we also get to help entrepreneurs grow their money and grow their business and from a personal development space, grow themselves. So how amazing is that? We help people grow with God, grow in God or grow in their relationship with God and grow their business. Well, we thought about doing something super dope this week where we decided that we would go live and share some of the things we're doing behind the scenes. Chris, yeah. I don't know. I can't see people's comments. This is going to drive me crazy. Why can't I see? I'm I can see my... people viewing us. Um... Okay. I can't see <laughs> YouTube. I can't see. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to make sure I can see y'all comments and see y'all questions. If not, we're going to have to switch off of this and go with it and go old school. We got to go old school to IG live to IG live and try this on another day. Oh so my where goodness. are people logging in from? <laughs> yeah. Like I'm looking like I feel YouTube. like a kid trying something for the first time. Like where's the streaming to? I'm not seeing nobody. Oh my goodness. So let me tell you how you could get your comments. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see my people. I'm trying to see. Okay. Let me type this. You see a little window that shows you comments. Let me see if my window shows me comments. Oh, and I can see not... comments. Kimberly is on. BYD Creatives is on. Um, Where Rachel are you seeing is this? On. I'm seeing it on my screen. Zareen is on. Tampa, know. Florida. Baltimore is in the building. Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo. Look View the screen and you'll see the comments. I do not. I do not see it. I'm super old school, man. I think oh. I'm the least. I think I'm the least techie guy and on the planet, y'all. Like I gotta be the least techie guy in the whole world. Right now, the folks are in the building. All right. I'm seeing a little bit. I'm not really seeing. I feel like I'm out of. I'm out of screen right now. I don't know. All right. So let's do it like this, family. So here's what we decided. Here's what we decided to do. Christian can see y'all. I can't see y'all. I can't see comments. I don't know where she's even seeing these comments at. One of these days. Okay. Let me do. Oh, now I see it. Okay. There it is. What's up? What's up? Now I see it. All right, I screwed up on IG Live, too. I think I messed that one up. So let me exit. Let me end the live for IG. Okay, but we should still be live on continue with, hold on. 
says continue without Instagram Live. Why we cut off on Instagram yeah, Live? Yeah, continue without Instagram because people seeing us, like people saying okay. tech is disgusting. They we'll on Facebook, to, they on YouTube. We'll just Let's have to go live. We'll just have to go live on Instagram. All right, so here's the goal, <laughs> family. We wanted to give you a sneak peek inside of our business. So this week is called Mob Week. And I love, like, you guys will get a chance to see some content. We actually recorded um, our staff meetings earlier today, as well as, like, I, uh, we, uh, how honest should we be? How honest y'all want us to be with this, y'all? Like, type in the chat. How honest y'all want us to be with, with some of the things that is happening? Like, Christian, we're going to have to just go on IG Live. <laughs> How honest but do y'all want us to? No, I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about after this. But how honest okay. do y'all want us to be? Talk in the chat if you're on YouTube, on Facebook. How honest do you want us to be? Because I think nobody talks about like the bad stuff, the the uncertainty, the good, the bad, the indifferent. Well, here's what happened. We recently had to um, transition out someone out of the company. And I was like, maybe we shouldn't talk about this, but no, we should. Because that's the honest part of that CEO work that is so important because most people keep everything a secret and they just make it seem like, right, be transparent. So whenever you, well, let's talk about, Christian, like some of the obstacles as a CEO, COO of when you have to transition someone out of your company. Or let's just say someone's been working with you for a long time and they, the longer they've been doing it, the more out of touch you are with what it takes to do it. So if you build something out in your company and let's just say with me, I'm not, I don't know how to log into nothing, Right. So I want to talk about the hardships of building a team and when you have to make transitions in the team for two reasons, for underperformance or because your vision changes, right? Like how, how tough is that? Like whenever I decide that I want to go on a different route in our business, that means that your star players that were like, for instance, if you build a basketball team surrounding, surrounding Steph Curry, when Steph Curry leaves and you get a center, well, your whole personnel, personnel changes. So that means your focus of the business, your focus of the team changes. And it's so important that you know, how do you transition people gracefully? How do you maintain your vision while still letting people maintain their integrity and their dignity? Also, still not losing money, holding on to people too long, which is I've done it several times. Several people should have been gone a long time ago, right? Uh, we had one that I called and told me they were asleep. That's why they missed my phone call. Yeah, my, in the middle of their shift. Can y'all believe this? In the middle of their shift, I said, hey, I've been calling you. What's going on? Oh, I was asleep. <laughs> but let's speak to that. Like how, what is, so they want, a, want an opportunity to know, like, what's our process? When we get ready to hire, what are some of the things we look for, some of the things we do? Let's get them insight behind the business of how we hire. Then we'll talk about how we run our programs, how we are constantly tweaking and changing our processes. Let's speak to that. Okay, so outside of competency, we have a framework for everything. If you guys have been around Marcus and his content, you know that everything is framework driven. So we have C5 in terms of our hiring process. So competency is you being skilled to do what you do. So we look for how competent the person is. We actually look for have you been doing what you are trying to sell us that you do? That's the first thing, because sometimes people inflate their resume, they inflate their experience and they're like, oh, yeah, I've been managing social media. I've been doing podcasts um, and it's things that they aspire to do, <laughs> but not things that they're actually doing. Yeah, yeah. So we actually say, like, show me what you've done for someone else or what you've done for yourself. I think what ranks stronger when I'm interviewing, I, I start looking for um what they've built for themselves, not just what they've helped other people build. Because you tend to have, um, and this is something I learned from you, Marcus, in terms of our hiring, you tend to have more affinity if you're building something for yourself. So we look at, okay, what have you built? You say, okay, I love podcasting. I love social media. I love admin. I love this. What is your aspiration? What have you built? What have you done? And I think that ranks high in um, when we're doing interviews and when we're selecting someone because people can inflate, like I said, their resume. They can have the skill, but then we need to look for, okay, cultural fit. Um, we talk about communication. We have something called communication, really, which is one of our C's of the C5 we formula. Gotta, we got we to gotta pause on that one so they can get it. Who, like, <laughs> y'all drop it in the chat if y'all still with us. You're hearing some of the, some of the thought that goes into hiring. Now, this is before you find the person. 
Yes. Like some of you who are about to hire your team, the decision you make for hiring happens before you meet the person. So your qual your qualifications of what you're looking for happens first, because the same way you need messaging to attract clients, you need messaging to be able to attract your ideal audience. When you talk about creating a customer avatar, you also have a staff avatar. It's what does a person have to be to work with your team? What does a person have to know to work with your team? So we want to make sure when we say communication relay, this is, we're just walking you through a framework we use called C5. That's what we use as our hiring process. That's, that's a part that lets us know, honestly, when to transition someone out. It's just a nice way of saying fire. Uh, right. So that lets, lets you know when to transition somebody out. So what we use when we say communication relay, do y'all want to know what, what I mean by that? When I say communication relay, y'all got to be talking to me, YouTube, y'all be talking to me, Facebook. <laughs> do y'all want to know what I mean when I say communication relay or nah? What's up? Do y'all want to know or nah? When I say communication relay, do you want to know what I mean by that? I have been hiring for 10 years. I'm transitioning to do the same for my business. Perfect. Okay, so here's what we mean by communication relay. Communication relay for us is most people in their business do not have a process of how communication goes from your head out of your mouth to the ears and comprehension in the hands of your people. So I, when I'm thinking communication relay, I'm thinking head, heart, hands. How does the information get out of my head into the hearts of people so they can take ownership, love it, like it, buy into the vision of it where they're passionate about the work they're doing and then move into their hands. That's the skill of how they accomplish it. Because the higher you are in your company, work for me ends at head. It don't move to hands because that's what you hire people for. What you want to do is free up your hands so your heart and your head stays clear. So now yeah. my job is to stay passionate, to stay vision driven, to keep empathy for people, empathy for my clients, empathy for my company, empathy for problems, because that's the only way we make money is if I feel the pain of people for their problem and work on a solution for it. So my heart got to feel, got to feel it enough and care enough to do it. My head got to be clear enough to think it. And it's my job then in communication relay. How clear can I communicate what I'm seeing in my head? Mob week was a thought. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. It was a thought. So communication relay, in short, it goes from it is how we extend communication throughout the company. So it's what do we expect from our team once we tell them what we want? How do they give us feedback to let us know they receive the task, understand the task, working on the task, complete the task? So every one of those steps is a baton that's being passed. Reception of a task is that is from me handing it from my head to their hand. That's the first part of the relay. Then it goes into their confirmation that they're working on it. At that point, that's when they ask us clarifying questions if they don't get it. Mm -hmm. We we require don't start working until you clear. Yes. <laughs> right? Today, you were going to meet, hey, don't. I gave permission to bother me. I was like, yo, I'm available to you. I'm going to hold your hand. Now, after 30 days, I expect you to have it. Was that not the clear communication I said in the meeting? It was. It was. So it I'm was. explaining to the person, here's the handoff. Here's, I walked through seven things I wanted him to do. I want this, 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 and I trained him one time on all seven. The meeting is recorded. His responsibility then is to get it in his heart where he cares about it, get it in his hands where he know how to do it. So what does he have to do when, when we got off the call? He got to follow up and let me know the status of it before the shift ends. Hey, received it, working on it right now. Why? I never want to wonder once I give out something if it's being done. So communication yeah. relay is once I re release it out, you don't want people to, to to just grab something out of a meeting and you don't know whether it's being done. So you send a message and say, hey, y'all still working on that? So in our culture, we say we assume it's not done if you don't confirm in communication relay you're working on it. That's right. That's right. All right? So communication relay starts with the head of the leader, the head of the director, the, lead, the head of the, our COO, Christian. From that, the person then confirms I received the baton. Work. I received it. Have no questions. Working on it now, because ignorance is not an excuse to not do the work. Hey. You don't get a chance to go a full week and do nothing and say I didn't know, because we got a cultural rule for that. How? When does? When does I don't know expire, Christian? 
I don't know expires in 24 hours. We used to be 24 to 48. We cut it back to 24 because you should ask a question, a clarifying question, if you are unsure about a task. So if you go 48 and you're still unsure, it's too long um, because we would have been waiting on the task. And one of the things CEO Marcus does not like to ask questions, hey, was this done? Um, because it means his mind has to be on the task. So the um, communication really helps us to uh, alleviate that additional stress of him having to figure out, hey, I wonder if they did this, did they send this email, did they contact this client? So you wanna make sure in your staff communication that people say, yes, I received the task. Yes, I understand the task, working on it. Um, and then they give feedback, still working on it, completed the task, here's my result. So communication is big for us. We look for it in the interview. Our interviews are very different. They're just like this. They're super laid back. We're not uptight. One of our staff said, whoa, I've never been to an interview that's like this. Like the interview is fun because we have personality. Um, we're real laid back, real chill in our meetings. Everyone is off mute. Everyone is on screen. <laughs> that's our say culture. That one, say that one more time. <laughs> What's our rule? Everyone is what? In our meetings, everyone is off mute on Zoom everyone is on screen on zoom um so we want it as if it's a dinner table so ceo marcus does not like to wait for the response so he wants us to be like yes i got it no i haven't got it i'm thinking about it so we have a very open meeting where everyone has to be on screen that's a culture point everyone has to be unmuted also a culture point to contribute to the discussion now, somebody he hearing some of these things, I know we're jumping around a lot and they were listening like, what's C5? That's a framework we use that really is company core values, culture, and it's the avatar we look for to see like who can be a part of the company. It's something that some time ago I realized that I didn't have. Here's the, the, admit the, the part of admitting and leadership, right? I realized that I was clearer on the clients I work with than I was on the people who work with me to serve those clients. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was more clear on here's here's what a person has to be to become a client. But I wasn't clear on what does a person have to be to help me serve those clients. So that means you could, sometimes you, I thought I wasn't enjoying the work when it was it was so many things. Clients didn't get what they needed. My vision of how I saw the company, I didn't know how to get that out of my head and put those pieces in place. Uh, shout out to my my I would say pastor, mentor. Uh, I got to give him a shout out. Darius Daniel said something to me that I will never, ever, ever in life forget because it, it drastically emotionally shifted things for me. He said, man, you remind me of me. And he gave me a very, un I hope you don't remember me sharing this, very <laughs> honest conversation. Of, he said, the thing that is best for you is the thing that is best for others when your heart is in the right place. Mm. And, it, and, it, and think about that. When your heart is to serve people, the thing that's best for the people you're serving is the thing that's best for you because you're only doing what you need for yourself so you can be better for them. For them. If you ain't selfish as a leader, what is normally best for the people in the company is you to be your best so you don't lash out, withdraw, so you don't make rash decisions, so you're not burned out. And when I'm burned out, I'm less creative, I'm more frustrated. I start looking at things differently, like what they doing, what they doing, and now I get on everybody's <laughs> nerves, right? So... That drastic point, when you guys are hearing me say, the change I made was, what do I need for the energy that I would need to conduct the meeting? I need the meeting virtually to feel like it's in person. Mm -hmm. Right? So because, because of that, I don't do mute. Because in person, people aren't muted. <laughs> so in a Zoom room, people shouldn't be muted because in person they're not. If you say, what if their background is loud? Well, it shouldn't be. Right. They should <laughs> yeah. fix the surroundings because it, in a meeting, you turn everything off. You So I wanted to create a culture that's fun, that's exciting. I'm still trying to tweak some things that I'm about to make it celebratory with music and everything else. Where I'm talking about everybody starts with standing up and clapping and everything. Today, that's the kind of vibe I was on. That's yeah, you energy I want today. Right. That's the kind of energy I want. So if you're a leader and you are CEO, it is not it is not you being narcissistic. That's not what I'm saying. It's not you being a tyrant. That's not what I'm saying. But it is you creating an environment for you to get in the zone to build something 
that helps the people that you, like if you build a business, there's something you're doing that helps people. That's why they pay you. And it's also helping the people that is on your staff because you make money to be able to pay them. So you got to create the environment that allows you to serve the people that pay you and to be able to pay the salaries of the people who help you do that. So that's what's super, that's what's super important. All right. Uh, I see a few questions. I'm going to go to those and we'll jump around a little bit. We want to test this out tonight, CEO Conversations. Chris, I think we ought to do a podcast on this. Yeah, right. this is good. Like, we, we have so much to share and talk about. Yeah, it's like how we share. And we still got to jump over to, to our IG friends IG in a live. second. Yeah. yeah, we got to jump over to our IG friends in a second. Oh, Jesus, I ain't seen none of these comments. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I see Kim, Kimber, Kimber. Oh, okay. Kimberly, okay, I didn't know if it was two eyes. Kimberly, I see you. Yes, I'm pivoting to digital organization versus in-person organizing because hiring good people is getting on my nerves. Kimberly, can I <laughs> offer you some advice on that? On that? That's funny. <laughs> I see you, Rachel. I see you, Danielle. Can I offer you some advice on that, Kimberly? I speak all my messages to my team. Oh, yeah, we definitely... Can I offer you some advice on that? I love that. I'm in the hiring and training stage. Ooh, we didn't realize so many people need this conversation and need details because you guys might want to know our, our, I think it's a seven-step process that you take someone to before you even hire them, right? So you don't have to get on an actual interview with people to hire them. There's a process that happens before that to even determine whether you hire them, right? So you don't waste your time on people or even what we do in the first 30 days of a new hire and what that looks like. Yeah. All right, so I see Kimberly's, uh, I'm going to jump to, uh, my advice would be whether you're hiring for in-person, whether you're hiring for virtual, quality people, it's actually harder to find virtually because it's harder for you, the person to feel your energy, your spirit, your essence virtually. So it's harder to discern and find good hires virtually than it is in person. So that's where your organizational structure got to be super tight. Your onboarding, mid-boarding, hiring, training, which we still are constantly tweaking and tightening up. And, I, and every time I break that, like, I'm going to be honest, every, with Chris, I ain't take her through the ringer like that. Because, like, I had already been working with her through other two people years. that's close to me. I, I mean, true. True, true, true. You did was two years. But I'm saying, like, our, our onboarding now. I have broken protocols yeah. sometimes yeah. and just, like, I ain't going to take them through training. They know me. But what happens is I shortchange the person by not completely giving them the training, not that they want. Does it make sense? So, like, sometimes we think we're helping by not fully training when really we're hurting. So it's harder with a virtual business where nobody lives in the same city or state as you because now you have to have more touch points. you got to get stronger with culture, stronger with communication because your culture will then weed it out. So the way we do it now, you can't go a whole week without us knowing what you're doing, where you are. So what are our touch points? Whether it's in the morning, one of the cultural things is everyone greets each other virtually when they start their shift. Why? Because you would greet people in the, in the building. In so the building. now virtually, all the staff greets each other when they clock in. Because in the building, everyone would greet each other. That's one cultural point we believe in, in it being family, right? So if a person is unable to do a task... They communicate it openly. Um, another aspect of that is our weekly meetings on Tuesdays. That helps. Another aspect of that is I try to never go. This is something I ain't, I've never shared openly. I don't know if I should tell y'all this one. This is another aspect of building culture because it's hard to find good people. Why? Because good people always have options and they want more than money. <laughs> it's hard to find good people. Bob. So if you say, man, I would love to have somebody like Marcus who he's efficient, he can communicate, he's a leader. Well, the better a person is at their role, the more options they have to get other roles. And you got to pay that person more than money because money ain't the issue. They can make their own money or they can go find a new job when they're talented. So I'm aware of the fact that Chris is talented, smart enough, bright enough, gifted enough that she can find a job. She needs more than that in order to be a part of something. So that means culture leaving space for that person to paint their own picture where certain certain things i give out in vision i intentionally leave holes in them because great people yeah. need the ability to be what they are within your vision so That's if good. you lock it down and you think through it too much and don't ask questions in that meeting hey, here's what i'm thinking what do you think 
Yeah. Great people want the ability to help you form form a thought, but they don't want to come into a completely blank canvas. So they need to respect you as a leader. So they got to hear your vision. But the vision needs to have space where they can see themselves in it, because that's what really that's really what leadership is, fam. Leadership is inviting people on the journey to discover themselves while they follow you. That's good. I'm going to say it one more time. Leadership is inviting people on a journey to discover themselves while they follow you. Which means two things. Your life must be going in the direction they see for themselves. Number one. Good. This is Number good. two, the vision you paint, the destination must not just have the life you'll live, but must also include the life that they will live. So leadership is inviting people on a journey to discover themselves. What do I want? What do I need? They don't always know that. So that's why you challenge both business and personal in the leadership roles of your companies because people will be better for your company if they get better as a person. So it's your job to make them better as a person because great people want to do purpose work, not busy work. Come on. So you want to find people that if you just get them busy tasks, they get bored, they get tired, and they're like, I ain't doing that. So quality people, it's not even about the money. They'll take less money to have a higher quality of life. That's true. <laughs> right. So, so let's let's speak to. I know we got questions. All that question. Let me, I don't talk too much. What What you think? Like, what's? <laughs> let's talk about this whole COO CEO dynamic before we go. Like, many of them are hearing that, and ultimately, the bigger your company gets. Let me make sure we grab these. I am always available. I have been a VP for two years and in leadership for twenty five. Dope. Uh, the bigger your company gets. I'm, I'm talking to, to visionary founders, like if you establish, build your company. Anybody in here, like you're you're the CEO of your company. Like not just within a corporate structure organization, but you're the founder. You built the company, started the company. It was your, it was your brainchild. Like anybody in here, you're the CEO of your company. I'll let me in the chat. If you're a CEO, drop, I'm, drop CEO for me. I'm loving the comments because it seems like this conversation is really hidden. So I'm so glad that we're doing this because people are like, yeah, I need this conversation. Man, we got to fix that IG part, man. That, that, that's my most lit audience. That's my most lit yeah. audience. Do we have anybody to see those or is it just a major delay? I don't Anita, see Anita, what's up, family? <laughs> me. Somebody say <laughs> me. Yes. Preach. Okay. So when, when we're talking about the different the difference between good people have 100% CEO, there we go. When we're talking about something that you built, so let's use our companies. Well, main company, coaching, education company, right? With that one. I started that company from scratch. I had no employees. It was just me. It was just an idea, just a vision, just a dream, right? So that means that there was no payroll. It was me testing an idea to see, can I build this in a way that gets proof of concept, meaning... From my mind to packaging it, marketing it, marketing it, selling it, growing it, scaling it, right? So that's really the steps from the idea of the visionary. I got an idea of something I want to do. So from my mind or my idea to packaging it, that's where you package it into whatever form, whether it's digital product, physical product, whether it's service, so to the packaging, to the marketing it so people know it exists, to the selling it so you generate revenue so you can actually do it, to growing it where you grow the ability to touch more people with it to then scaling it, right? Well, I was able to I was able to make multiple six figures as a solopreneur, just me. Then we went high six figures, like 250, 500 with one, one virtual assistant. Then it was two virtual assistants. I just said to Christian recently, I was like, man, I miss, I had one virtual assistant that was a beast. You hear me? I, didn't I say her name the other day? Oh, yes. she was, she was five people. Like she was, oh my gosh, she was five people. I made a leadership mistake and took my hands off of stuff too fast because she was an employee and a worker. She wasn't a leader, but I placed her in a leadership role because of her ability to do work. And this is the biggest mistake you can make. A person's ability to do a high level of work does not qualify them to lead people to the same level of work they do. So I'm seeing how well she's killing it working and made her over and we hired four new people. Well, I did. I was not involved. I'm like, whoo, finally I can take a break. She hired four of her friends and cousins and I didn't know. <laughs> I did not know they was her family. So if one was off, all was off. I'd be like, what is going on? All all y'all sick? <laughs> like, oh, like, what is happening right now? 
Like, what is going on? You feel me? Or if some was off, they all would come on. They're like, what made y'all working on your day off? Oh, we just decided to. Yeah, you ain't realize, like, no, they fam, they family. They didn't find out till later. So here's what happens. When you get rid of one, you got to get rid of all. So it went from that to then growth to the height of it. We was 20 something people on staff. Now we down with like 11, if that. Yep. Like, like probably the smallest I've ever been is now, but the most productive. Cause we got, we learned yeah. a valuable lesson of hiring skilled positions yeah. and size of the amount of people on your payroll does not mean output productivity or money. The truth be told with three people was when I was killing it. I had a million dollar year with just me and two other people. Well, three other people, <laughs> you know, you know, so payroll was low, but stressed out, stressed out. All right. Let's grab some questions. I know we don't went all around the world and I, yeah, yeah. And we still oh, got to go to IG. Finish communication relay. Did we exhaust that yeah, point? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and finish communication relay. You go ahead. Finish communication relay. Okay. We're so communication relay. Let me summarize it <laughs> quickly, right? Um, the task leaves the CEO, goes to designated team lead. Then that team lead responds, I receive the task. I understand the task. Then the task is delegated to the respective team in our case, because we have like a media team, YouTube, admin, funnels. Um, so we have different teams. So the task now leaves there goes to the lead of that team or the person responsible for the task. They acknowledge, I received the task, I understand the task. The understanding of the task is super important because there'll be a delay in them completing the task if they don't understand the task. So I received the task, I understand the task. And then they move on, there's a timeline for the task. So we may say we want this in 24 hours, we want this in one hour, we want this in two days, we want this by Friday. So there's a time for the task. During that period, the person is responsible to say, I have completed the task or I'm still working on the task and I need more time. So the responsibility, once a task is released to the person that's working on it, the responsibility is theirs to say where the task is. So at no point, CEO is supposed to ask, did this, did this person complete this? Where is this task? At all times, we want to make sure we are aware of where the task is. Once the task is completed, it goes back up the chain to say task completed. This is my work. It's quality checked at that point because one of the things um, as COO, you have to know the style of the CEO. Marcus does not like reading a bunch of text, long explanations. He wants the Cliff Notes version. So the quality control before it goes to him is making sure it's edited, making sure it's in the style that we, we um, expect um, making sure if there are problems that we come with solutions so he never wants us to hand the decision back to him we should bring the feedback and bring some solutions mm. um so that's you have to know how does the ceo um, enjoy receiving information because we need to protect him as the most valuable resource in the company if we don't have a well ceo then the business suffers so I'm very keen on always protecting his energy. So I know, okay, he doesn't enjoy reading a bunch of texts, um, sending screenshots of the actual thing. I'm going to read it, summarize, and now give him Cliff Notes version <laughs> versus the long version. <laughs> Richard, they're going to think I'm a prima donna around here. No, what... but I mean, you communicate, this is how I enjoy receiving information. On a daily basis, you have a lot of decisions to make. So... My job is to not um, create decision fatigue for you because I understand my role in terms of keeping you healthy to think, to move, to be free to do certain things. So I try to alleviate most of the decisions or at least come with solutions, right? Another framework that we have. If we're going to present a problem, we should have thought the problem through, presented with possible solutions. Oh, I don't know if I should tell them the problem solving framework. Diamond, did that help you? Because I know Diamond wanted the communication, really. So when we, the reason why I say that, when we say the Cliff Notes version, what is the Cliff Notes version? Do y'all want to know, like, what, what's the framework we use for the Cliff Notes version being given to me? 
Does anybody want to know, like, if there is a problem in the company, how do I want that communicated? Because we even teach how to communicate the problem. So we teach how to communicate the problem. I won't give it to you if you don't want it. Do you want to know how we teach within the company how to, how to communicate the actual problem? That's my girl. Okay, Felicia, yeah. what up? <laughs> like, so when we talk about things like the Cliff Notes version, it is very difficult. Everything in the company has to be defined. Because if you say, hey, if you hire somebody and you say, hey, give me the Cliff Notes version, they don't know what that means. Well, that so, it ha so everything that you say must be defined into a framework so they can actually follow it. So you That's can't good. say, hey, when you're telling me something, give it to me quick. Now they don't know how much information to give, how much not to give. So quick has to be defined to match your standard. That's good. So, here, so here's what we do. Here's what we do. Everybody write this down. When there is a problem in the company, the framework that is used for a person to give you that problem is 131. The person must, must come to you with one problem. Why? You don't want nobody jumping all around, all around without what when you can't even stay on one. One problem. So this is how it starts. One problem. Even if you got five, come on, give them to me one at a time. So it starts one problem. Three options that they have tried to find that they have tried to find for the one problem. Before they bring it to you, there's work for them to do. Mm -hmm. They can't yeah. dump a problem in your lap. <laughs> so problems go, the person spotted the problem. They have to come up with three options. Like, okay, I'm thinking if this is the problem, we can do this, this, or this. And then when we say one, three, one, one problem, three possible options they research, and their one suggestion out of the three. That's one, three, one. Here's the one problem. Here's now if if they are severe and it's three different things, all three things match one, three, one. Hey, all right, Marcus, there's three things. Here's here's the problem. Here are the three things. Here's my suggestion. Are you good? Nah, let's do this, isn't this, blah, 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 boom, move to the next one. It's one, three, one. Yeah. One problem, three possible options that they research. It's not my job to research how to fix a problem. If that's the case, the person shouldn't be paid for it. It's the job of the people that are paid to research how the problem can be fixed, and then they give you one suggestion. Now, as the CEO or COO, it is your job to then, based on their suggestion or the option, say, hmm, you know what? I like what you got. And you can confirm that it's right, or you can say, I like this, but I want to yeah. add this to it. Yeah. Or you can say, I like all three options. Let's present all three of those as the options for the person. So if they say, hey, the client wants this, 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 and this, that's the one problem. Here are the three things that I, that I think would be great for it. I would suggest we do all three. You know what? Yeah, send an email. Send all that. I like it. Okay, cool. Let me know how that goes. And now it goes from 131 to communication relay. Because yeah. 131 is how they solve the problem, but communication relay is you got to bring me back the information of how it worked. So I don't, I shouldn't have to ask, hey, how did that work out? Because all the frameworks align with each other. 131 is the, is the problem solving framework. Communication relay is the way that communication is disseminated throughout the company. So now I'm always aware without asking whatever happened with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did we ever fix that? Did that, did that ever happen? Hey, how'd that work out? Yeah. It's not the person's job to hold in our head information that prevents creativity. It's the yeah. job of people to communicate that and keep communication flowing and being handed off to where it needs to go. Now, all of that don't have to come to me. All that is yeah. not a Zoom call. Some of those things are just a simple message. And the message should look and be spaced a particular way because we even talk about that. It should <laughs> literally be C3. It should... Where, give it to me fast, right? Like, hey, fix the problem, was able to use blank as a solution, client is good to go. Boom, got what we need, information there. Did that help? Let me hear from y'all. Did that help hearing some of the frameworks we use in our company? That Does that help? Does that help y'all at all? Y'all holler at me. Is this helpful? Who feels like you can use 131 as a solution? Yes. So we're not even going to get to all of our points for tonight. <laughs> nah, we ain't going to be able to get to none of them. And this is just one company. Like, this is just a coaching education company. This is not staffing. This is not media. This is not, you know, it. 
your frameworks and things of that nature, y'all, it's not one size fit all. That's the beauty of business. Every business is tailor-made to its staff, to its operations, its output. If you're going B2B versus B2C, there's difference with that if you're selling products, if you're selling services, if you're doing live and in-person events. Like, every business <laughs> like has – this is why it's not easy being a CEO. It's not easy being a COO. It's not bu easy building – like, especially when people say they want to make multi-millions. I'm telling you, it is not easy making, maintaining <laughs> revenue. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before we go? We got. I got a roll, y'all. I got, like, Christian, we're going to have to do, um, let's go live on Instagram at, like, 8. Because, you know, I got my thing at 7. So, we're yeah. going to go live on Instagram at, at like, 8 o'clock. I know that's that's past your bedtime. Oh but tell, but tell, tell Trevor that you'll call him back afterwards. All right. <laughs> <laughs> any qu any questions any questions any questions any questions any questions leadership is hard man it's not a role i even thought i would ever be in but i feel like it's inevitable if you grow anything right so if you grow a business it's inevitable you have to develop the skill of of leadership and become becoming not an entrepreneur but a ceo that's the only way that you truly grow and scale companies uh, to multiple seven figures and beyond. Any questions before we roll out? I feel like we gave a lot of great info, Chris. We did. We did. I see somebody said it was hey, taking notes. Should we do more CEO conversations? Do you think this would be helpful, y'all? Do you think CEO conversations would be helpful? Should we do more of this? My sister Felicia in the building. So I miss you, man. I ain't seen you in forever. Should we do more of this? I know it's a delay. Like should we yeah. should we come back and bring bring this back? Should we try it again next month, bigger and better? I can't even say next week, next month. <laughs> I got stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no questions, I got a roll, family. I love y'all to life, man. Do me one favor, y'all go follow and connect with my partner in success, Christian Sarah Bowen. She got a bunch of great stuff coming up. If you are a purpose driven entrepreneur and you say, man, I am faith driven, I would love to know how it is that I can live and function in purpose and still make money so I can do my purpose full time, tap in with her. She teaches people that are purpose driven how to be able to live in purpose full time and get paid for it. So it's yeah, super phenomenal yeah. what she's doing. And I want to invite you all for the rest of the week. Every day this week, we got something going on. So those who need the information, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. I don't even know the site. Chris, you know the site, the website. No. Monetize with market something. <laughs> all right. Do me one favor. Y'all do this. Go to my Instagram and comment the word. Comment the word summit. Summit. Go. Let me put it up here. Go to my IG and comment or DM the word summit. And like, what's your Instagram? Marcus Y. Rosier. <laughs> All right. At Marcus Y. Rosier. Let me put this right here so everybody has it. All right, I'll drag you right there. There we go. Let me take one of them off, keep this one on. All right, go to my Instagram, go to my IG and comment. Can you see it on the screen? Yes, I see it. All right. No, I don't so, see it on your screen. Oh, why is it not on there? Maybe I can't see it, but I see it in the chat. Do y'all see it on the screen? I thought I put it up there. I see it on mine. Okay, so then it's probably there. Okay. Hopefully y'all can see it on the screen. So here's what's happening. Let me tell you, let me tell y'all what's happening this week. Tell you what's happening this week. Today is CEO Conversations. Tomorrow, my favorite day, at 12 p.m., we are doing a faith and business lunch and learn for people who want to grow in their relationship with God and grow their business and bank account. So we we are unapologetically, we understand we're not saying that money is most important, right? We we believe in the concept of what we call more God and more money not or, that God placed in its, pro in its proper place grows all things in our life. So if we get more God, he's going to give us more vision, more opportunity, more resources, more everything. Where if we anything that God grows, if he grows your family or your business, you're going to need more money. If he grow your square footage, you're going to need it. So we are having, we're taking the Bible and using practical concepts to teach how people can advance in their career and grow in their business while also growing in their faith, not having to abandon that. Well, tomorrow I'm teaching something phenomenal. Uh, we've been in this series called Extreme Makeover Prayer Edition. Tomorrow I'm moving into Extreme Makeover Time Management Edition. 
right? So I'm break, I'm using Jesus as a case study to show the most productive person to ever live. How did he manage his day? Like how, how, how you be about your father business and do everything else. So tomorrow we're teaching time management Thursday and Friday is five figure month summit. So faith in business on Wednesday at 12 o'clock, five figure month summit Thursday and Friday at 7 PM. You don't want to miss it because we're teaching you our exact system that we use to help our clients make no less than five figures a month while working less than eight hours using our monthly lead lunch and sales system. So we show a person, how do you get more people to know you exist, leads? How do you launch monthly in less than eight hours so now there's consistent people coming into your business and buying? And how do you close more sales? To make no less than five figures a month, and the whole thing takes less than eight hours a month. All right? If you know you're locking in, if you've already gone, go right now. Go right now to my IG and comment the word summit. Go to Marcus Robert Rose and comment the word summit. Here's what's amazing. you like, how much it costs? We got two options. You can come for free. Or you can come VIP. Our VIP guests get an opportunity to get a full business makeover where we look at your business, your operations, your marketing, your branding, your launch strategy, your sales system, and we customize a plan for you. So you can learn the information coming, coming general for absolutely free so we can serve you. But if you say, man, I need hands-on help coaching where you personalize the information for me, you want to go VIP. All right. So you can go right now, comment the word summit on my IG, and you can get access to all of that. Faith and Business Lunch and Learn, Five Figure Month Summit, the exact monthly lead lunch and sales system you need to make no less than five figures a month. All right. I love y'all to life. Y'all have a phenomenal night. Who know you coming this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? I'm wait, I'm gonna wait on that. Say, <laughs> say I'm there if you're coming Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday at 12 o'clock. We on Zoom, baby. Faith and Business Lunch and Learn, Thursday and Friday, the Five Figure Month Summit. Come in, I'm there if you're coming this week. You got to go to the page and register. Don't just say I'm there. Don't be out here in these internet streets lying. I'm there. <laughs> like, girl, what you doing? I ain't going. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need, who say I'm there? I'm looking for you right now. Who's, I know there's a delay, so I'm going to give it like 20, like five seconds. Like, that's the only thing about YouTube and Instagram, I mean, and uh, Facebook. Facebook. The delay is so bad. It's so yeah. bad. I know many of you are coming and showing up, so I can't wait to see you tomorrow. If you've already registered, you're on the list, so our, e our um, email and text, you'll get an email and text and all that good stuff uh, with links to join. All right, I love y'all to life. Have a phenomenal night. I'll see you in a minute.